Ash in the wings. Uh, now that he's uh, got over the. Hi, Ash. Hello. So it's been. Uh, we were just mentioning earlier that there's a, a time shift. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so my, my clocks have gone back an hour and you guys have changed the time. So it's all got really confusing for me. Yeah. I uh uh so it's now it's now eight thirty no, it's actually it's actually about nine o'clock here now. But I was I was scheduled. I thought I thought we were having the other chat at eight thirty and we were gonna start this about quarter past nine. So I'm a, I'm a, yeah, an hour out of schedule at the minute. That's okay, but you're looking good. I haven't seen you for ages. No, it's been a while, isn't it? It's been a while since I've I've managed to get into this actually. So uh, it's it is quite nice to get involved on the Sunday. It's, it's quite nice to prepare properly for next week. Yeah, it's an important time, you know. The markets are closed, and it's it's one of those funny weeks with the uh, election following Tuesday. But uh, yeah, do you know? Tell I, me, what, I, uh, what have you been looking at? Well, I the, the thing that I'm the most interested now uh, in is the Nasdaq, um, and I'll show you what's going on with the Nasdaq. Um, the uh, I mean, I'm always interested in the FTSE, of course. Now, the FTSE, the FTSE, I, I think it it may well strengthen. the the pr The problem the FTSE's you know continuously got is Brexit. Is it on? Is it off? Is it on? And and Brenda, we had last week an announcement that they'd made a breakthrough. So the pound did strengthen up, and I've been looking specifically at the euro pound, and the pound did strengthen against the um, uh, against the euro. So this is the the the, uh, the euro first, and and it was a a big move to the downside. But while we're in the US show, um, I was uh, I was saying to the guys, you know, there's a buying opportunity down here, and the reason there was a buying opportunity is that there was no deal done. And, uh, you know, the, 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 the continued yeah. speculation just kind of like, you know, it, it constantly fuels this stuff where it just bounces uh, mm. up and down and up and down. And if we look at this on a, on a daily chart, then you can see that there is a, a pretty strong support line here. And that, this is where we ended up. We ended up right down at the support line. But, um, yeah. but the market, you know, it strengthened all the way back up again. Um, and it kind of puts us in a, a bit of uh, a strange area because we, we, it looks like, you know, if we were sort of like drawing trend lines and it's going to be dependent on where we are, but it looks like we are on top of the previous trend line as well. Um, you know, it, it, this, this looks like a false break. And if we were if we were thinking about this on um, on slingshot territory, then it looks like a false break and a move to the downside and a retest. So it does suggest if we're looking at on, on a daily chart, anything under this level now, if it breaks, is probably going to give us a pretty good move to the downside again down to this point here. So I'm going to be looking for opportunities to short the euro pound because, again, you know, that the deal um, was on, but then it was kind of off again. But I think it's going to ultimately be on. I, 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 even though we have got the most maverick prime minister, possibly uh, certainly in my lifetime, but possibly in history, I, uh, I still don't think that he's going to commit economic suicide. And, and it really would be economic suicide if they don't get a deal with the EU. Um, there's too much trade that goes from our country to that particular block uh, to plug the gap with any other little um, trade deals they do with the likes of Japan, which they did over the weekend. Um, so yeah, sorry, <coughs> so I, I, she's working hard, that minister. Isn't she? Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's, let's trust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she's working hard and she, she's yeah, done a she's good job. She's working really hard. She's done a good job, but it, it still yeah. won't plug the gap. When, when, when we kind of like recognise that 45% of the UK's GDP is really kind of generated through the European Union, it's going to take years to, to kind of uh, replace that particular deal. So they need a deal. There's no doubt about it. The, the, the problem seems to be about fisheries, you know, and the biggest sticking point is France because France share that kind of um, that block of water between the, the two countries. So France and Macron are playing hardball. And I think the rest of the EU are trying to um, placate him a little bit and say, look, just relax a bit, because if we don't get this deal done, then because of the fisheries, <clears throat> the whole thing could collapse. So I think I think that, you know, they're, they're trying to placate him, but he's just not he's just not biting on it right now. So I think it is going to be down to France and the UK and France have got a bit of a checkered history, so it could well be uh, France that you know that uh, that uh, that could <laughs> the kibosh. Yeah, well, I mean, it's uh, you know, obviously uh, we uh, we've got you know a lot of our language from uh, from from France because we got invaded so often, and particularly William the Conqueror, <laughs> who who was pretty good at it. So uh, 
So, yeah, we, we do have a check in history and it, and it might kind of come back again to, to kind of rear its ugly head. Um, but the political um, the political balance is too great, I think, in, in favour of doing a deal, because if we think about what would happen if we didn't get the deal, firstly, the 45 percent of, uh, of GDP would be affected. Now, obviously, that's not going to get down to zero. It just means that it's going to be um, it's going to be um, uh, so probably substantially less. But also we've got the problem with the UK getting broken up if there isn't some sort of deal done. So there's there's quite a lot in the balance here. So I'm looking for shorts in the euro pound. I think if we can get it early enough before it uh, it comes down here and then the deal is done, then we should have a really good run right down to uh, around about 0.8875, I would have thought. So looking for uh, looking for signals in this one, um, you can see that, the, uh, the, you know, the last four hour bar mm. just before we closed up was was quite negative. But I don't I don't really play, pay too much attention to Friday's bar in relation to Monday. Um, because there's water goes under the bridge, you know, there's two days of the weather market is shut down and, uh, and too much water goes under the bridge for us to be able to trust a bar like this without some further information. So I'll be waiting on the information to kind of come in with that one, but I am looking for shorts in the, uh, in the Euro pound. I did draw a fib on it as well, just to see what, uh, you know, if, if the, if there was a Fibonacci level that we could start relying on, and it looks like it's just about holding between the 68.8 and the 50. So I suspect what we could look for is um, if the um, if the price action can get under this 50, and and it will be a lot more significant than a FIP. So if the price action comes down below the 50 and then comes back and retests the 50 and the 50 somewhere along this trend line and somewhere along this horizontal level and there's a pivot here i think this will be a really this will be a sweet spot so i'm yeah. i'm looking at them at the minute the uh, the uh the trade for me is along there now i don't know if it's going to be on monday i don't know if it's going to be on tuesday wednesday thursday or friday but i'm looking for this particular price point um, and that particular price point looks like it's around about the 0 0.9870, I would suggest. So it's, it's somewhere in, in that level. In yeah, I, a few ifs in, if, I just said you've got a few ifs in there when it comes back and if it comes back up and touches the trend line. But at the <clears> moment, <throat> during the way everything's trading, the, that's the best we've got, isn't it, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this is the, but this, the thing with the um, the thing with the, with the euro pound is that there's always going to be ifs until the uh, the deal is is finalised. Um, so while it's still in the balance and while there's still a possibility of a deal, it's unlikely to break to the upside. While it's still in the balance and there's possibility of a no deal, it's unlikely to break to the downside. So we 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 are really if we if we if we think about this in the um, inverse, then this is downside for the pound. So I don't think it's going to go downside. I think that there's still a chance that there's a deal to be done. And I, th and I think the deal will be done. So if I can trade it in this area that there's a deal that could be done and we come down and then the deal is done, then we're going to go, go down a lot further on this particular um, currency pair. So I like the euro pound um, and I'll be watching that closely. But as I said, I think the most interesting one uh, when it comes down to indices at this particular stage is the NASDAQ. And if we, if we, do a, com com uh, a quick comparison this is the s p and it, and it looks like you know again the s p may well have depending on where that uh, that trend line is but it may well have just poked its head above here on the four hour and and possibly kind of creating what looks like it could be a a, a bit of a uh, an accumulation pattern down here with this inverted head and shoulder so it looks like that's the uh, the left shoulder the head and it looks like that's the right shoulder now th th there's there's um there's certainly conflicting levels here so it could uh, it could be that uh, that we're we're trapped here and the most sensible thing to do uh, in this particular scenario would just be to just to wait for the break you know there's, there's no reason for us to trade here but waiting for the break to the upside coming back down and testing that level and then and then possibly we could we could you know try and take a trade to the upside from that particular point and it might be a a, a broader pattern but the key is that this is bashing its head um, to a potential move to the upside. Now, if we compare this to the NASDAQ, the, uh, the NASDAQ looks a lot more negative in, in many respects. It hasn't really kind of uh, created an accumulation pattern. And, it, and if anything, it looks like a potential selling opportunity here. The, this, this is really a, a lower level where we looked at the S&P and it's uh, on the four hour chart. It looked like it was making a, a slightly higher level. This really has kind of got, like, gone through here and come back and it's kind of 
like now is bashing here and it's on the trend line. So I, I think this one could fall. Now, the reason that I like the NASDAQ for for some downside, even though it, this, this, it's not necessary that I would trade it, um, I may, but, um, but, but, but the reason that I'm a little bit more cautious about trading the NASDAQ short is that it is the strongest indice um, of the year. So, uh, so do we want to get involved in, in fighting, you know, really what is the longer term trend on this one? And, and obviously the longer term trend is a very, very powerful move to the upside. Um, this is the weekly chart and we only need to look at the monthly really to kind of um, to, to uh, uh, corroborate that. Um, in saying that, with, with moves of this kind of velocity and, and this kind of um, trajectory, they have got a greater chance of if they do turn over, they come down and they come down hard. And it's possible that we could see the, the NASDAQ back down to 9,000 again. It's possible. And the reason I think that that is actually a possibility now is not because of the chart, but because of the potential of a Biden win. <clears throat> now, I completely um, 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 accept the, uh, the, 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 the statistical um, aspect of the presidential, in, the, the incumbent tends to win if the, if the stock market is up. Completely accept that. And, and uh, you know, that's, a, that's um, a, uh, a, um, a, a proven statistic over time. But we know that statistics can get, you know, be wrong as well. So that's certainly what that, that does suggest right now. But I've been watching and I've been keeping up with quite a lot of these, uh, these uh, presidential uh, debates. And I think this one's a lot closer. And if we consider what happened last time, Donald Trump did not win the, um, the popular vote, if you like. So he actually he lost the popular vote. And yet because of the way that um, the U.S. politics is is. Um, um, uh, cut up, he, he ended up winning the, the overall vote. Um, I, I think his impact on Hillary Clinton was greater than what his impact and the attacks that he's having against Biden for two main reasons. Other things that were outside um, helped Donald Trump in his crooked Hillary uh, label that he gave her. You know, he gave her the, the label crooked Hillary. And then all of a yes. sudden they were investigating her, her, uh, um, was it the accounts? But they, they were certainly, I can't remember her exactly email. what it was. Her, her email, yeah, that's her, right, her emails. Yeah. yeah, so there's an investigation going on. Now that, that, that I don't think we can, we can really sort of, uh, we can just brush over as something quite light. I think that really helped him because he gave her this label and all of a sudden, you know, she's, um, she is, or, or the, you know, the, 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 um, the, the Fed are almost proving the point that, that, you know, there's something to be wary of with, with Hillary Clinton. Now, Donald no, Trump's... Uh, he is a spin doctor. He's a very yeah, clever, he, uh, he's threat cunning. He's very good at it. He's very good at it. Now, the Sleepy Joe, the Sleepy Joe t uh, tag, <laughs> it doesn't really, it doesn't, it doesn't really kind of stick quite as well, you know, but, um, yeah, because... He's a bit more. Yeah, I mean, I, I watched it. Now, don't get me wrong. I've got, I, I don't really like Joe Biden. I think he's a bit of a snake. Um, but... Uh, we need Joe Biden because if we don't have Joe Biden, then uh, the environment could be destroyed beyond uh, any help in my, in my uh, belief. So I think we do need Joe Biden in power uh, because that's probably the, the, the biggest threat we've got for the next uh, decade. Um, but the main thing with him is that well, I, I've watched the presidential election debates and the, the, the better way, the best way for Donald Trump's, Sleepy Joe label to have stuck is if is if uh, Biden did get caught up in those debates and he didn't actually he was he was he was fairly fairly solid you know he was he wasn't particularly good he, but he wasn't bad either um, so I think uh, I think it, it's going to be a, a much much greater uh, struggle for Donald Trump to win this one um, now if that is the case back to the Nasdaq if that's the case there are already talks of um of a of, of a uh, of a biden admi administration um uh looking at the tech industry and and possibly even even kind of you know having competition uh um, uh, um some some sort of argument with the competition of the likes of google and apple and and facebook uh and there's this the, you know that there could be even some investigations going on to those guys with with tax as well we don't know but i don't think biden's going to be good specifically forget the rest of the indices because he, he probably won't be great for those either but i don't think biden's going to be particularly good specifically for the nasdaq 
So I'm watching the NASDAQ. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to take a selling opportunity yet, but I may have to, or we may have to, if, um, if, uh, if that's what uh, presents itself now. This might be the best possible price we're going to get, because if Biden gets in, by the time we know that information, the NASDAQ may be lower already. So, uh, so yeah, so it's the, it's the NASDAQ on the, uh, on the watch list for me. Um, it may be to go NASDAQ. short. It... I beg your pardon? The euro pound to go short when it, if, if we get a deal and NASDAQ, depending on who gets in. Well, euro pound to go short actually now. Um, I, the, when, it, when it comes down to the deal thing, I, I will rely on, because we are at a pretty good level with the euro pound, I think it's good value here um, because I don't think it's going anywhere but down a bit from here. So if I can get a trade on, put my, my stops at break even, and then see if I can actually get a ride without it taking me out, then I will play it that way. Um, but I think we have to be incredibly cautious. If we don't put those stops in place and, and play the euro pound um, with the acceptance that we may get taken out the trade and we may make nothing out of it, or very, very little out of it, then we could actually get run over in the opposite direction. So I don't think that would be a sensible thing to do. Um, yes, you could wait and see if there's a, an announcement of the deal, but I think it's going to move pretty, pretty sharpish. And uh, uh, in fact, I, I can show you that, that you know, what, what that looks like. I was watching the euro pound quite closely last week um, and uh, I had a small trade uh, on, on this one to the downside. Um, and this happened while I was so watching Julie, it. I beg your pardon? Julian has been looking for the euro pound to, to go short as well. Yeah, and well, I, I took a short here. Way. I took a short here. And all of a sudden, the euro pound, and, and you know, I'm going to change the time frames. I know this is probably going to freak people out, but, um, but we're going to look at this on a minute chart because this is how fast this thing moved. And the minute chart doesn't even really do it the proper justice. Uh, can I find it? There, look at that. And, th and I, I oh. promise you, that didn't take a minute. That was seconds. So if we think that we are going to get an opportunity when the, the announcement is made, then we're kidding ourselves. We have to we have to position ourselves sensibly to take a position on if we if we think the direction is short, we're going to have to take a position and, uh, and be sensible with the money because it will go like that and it'll be gone. By the time they come out and yeah. say the deal's been done, it's done. You know, we're over. So and this and as I say, this the, the minute chart does not do it justice. This was seconds. Um, I saw it just go from here down to there within no time at all. And I just was, I was just fortunate. I was in the, I was in the trade in the right direction because the truth is an, <laughs> an announcement could have come out and it could have gone that way. Um, so, uh, so, uh, I, you know, I, I'm, yeah, I'm not patting myself on the back about that one. I just happened to pick a, a you know, I was lucky. That was a lucky trade for me, but, um, but the way that we can negate that luck a little bit is by uh, by making sure that we uh, we trade at the correct level, but making sure those stops are in the right place and we don't over egg the pudding. We don't have to put a lot on this because if it's going, it's going to go a long way. You know, this is a weekly chart. So we're looking at, you know, uh, 200 and something pips uh, to, to the downside, which is a big move for the pound, uh, euro pound. Yeah, for the euro pound, that is. Okay. Um, well, that's that's really interesting because, like I said, we've got a choppy week coming into the end of the month. But with everything else, with the other events, it's uh, going to be an interesting interesting charts ahead. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that as well. Yeah, as you say, not only the last week of the month, but the preceding week to the uh, to the election as well. So, um, so it could be it could be quite uh, quite yeah. turbulent, and, uh, and and I don't think it's going to be a time to have a lot of positions on. I think just a few positions would, would be sensible. Um, I am bullish the stock market, uh, incidentally. You know, there's, there's certainly uh, there's certainly um, a, a few opportunities out there that I really like. Um, I like the travel sector, and uh, and there's a few because of the Biden environmental thing. There's a few environmental stocks that I, I'm I'm uh, I'm closely watching as well. So I think there are some quite nice opportunities, even if the market generally comes down. I think if we're sensible, we can probably pinpoint a few sectors that uh, that actually do quite well out of uh, the next uh, the next period, depending on who gets in, of course. Right. I've got a couple of questions here for you, Ash, and they revolve around your and Jeff's Monday to Thursday shows regarding times. Could you just confirm oh, yeah. that for your your call them groupies, your followers, your, yeah, your so attendees? If, because they just wanted 
want to just double check the time with the daylight saving. Yeah, well, it's going to be five to four sing. Actually, we'll, we'll be starting at five to four sing Monday to Thursday for the UK session. Um, right. And I don't know what. Uh, <clears throat> we're 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 effectively. I suppose we're just going an hour back. We're going an hour back because it's it's nine o'clock here right now. The UK market opens up at eight o'clock, and and our show is is designed and dictated by what happens with the UK market. So if uh, we're going to be going back an hour, so we'll be five to four for the UK session, and then the US session will be nine uh, nine no be 8 30 8 30 for the for the uh, for the youtube uh, aspect and then nine o'clock for the um for the u.s uh, session same, okay same time yeah. yeah hope everybody's happy with that yeah okay. ash thanks so much for joining us no no problem and no problem uh, at all. yeah i hope it i hope um i hope that all comes through nicely for us yeah yeah i mean th th you know this is the thing it's uh if if anybody is um if anybody is uh, <clears throat> panicking about the trays they've got on or the trays that they're, they're going to be entering, then my suggestion is that you're probably putting too much on. So <laughs> just don't do it. You know, <laughs> don't, There's just no need. There's no need. We can take a little Cut bite out of some of these. Yeah, exactly. Just, you know, ease, ease yourself in. Uh, and this is the thing. If we put a light position on the euro pound, uh, you know, enabling us to give us enough room. There might be an opportunity to add to it if we get that announcement. But if we're a lot, lot further down, but we'd be so covered by the first position that it won't matter. So we can still aggregate quite nicely. Yeah. Okay. Thanks so much, Ash. I'm going to go because I'm hosting at the moment. I will actually go to Lloyd if he is good to join us in the next couple of minutes. Uh, I'm not forgetting gold and oil and I'm just going to go because I'm going to go. Jeff sent through some charts in his absence. Um, he's not joining us this evening. It's a very important evening on the, on the, on the football calendar. It's grand. Uh, yeah, apparently so. <laughs> apparently so. Apparently <laughs> so. Yeah. Some sort of rugby. Uh, you know, yeah. And he loves his rugby. So we can't actually, um,